Welcome, everyone. This is Quest for You. I'm Janine, and I thank you for tuning in. This is a podcast about taking your life to the next level, getting out of stuck, moving forward with motivation. It's really all about taking action and doing something. So a lot of the topics we talk about will help you find back to where you left off or maybe where you've never been finding yourself getting back to yourself and just being more in tune with who you are because that will really be the thing that brings you forward and drive you and ultimately answer your questions whatever they may be so thank you for joining 29 episodes already. Quite amazing. Have you been inspired by some of them? Maybe you have discovered something that you really want to start. A way to express yourself. Maybe sharing something with a wider group of people. Something that you know how to do. Maybe you just want to start a morning routine. Getting up a little earlier and spending time with yourself. Maybe doing some exercise, some yoga. Or maybe something much larger, on a grander scale. Maybe you have an idea for a business. Or maybe somewhere in the middle. You want to do something on a side. Maybe a blog. Maybe taking a photography class or learning a new language. Any of these will require different amounts of time allocation in your schedule. And maybe so far you have struggled finding that time. In today's episode, I want to talk through the different options you have when it comes to making time for something new. I usually talk quite a bit about mental obstacles that we face. In episode 26, just recently, we talked about some strategies to get out of that mental funk and get moving forward when you feel stuck. But today we're going to focus specifically on on that precious resource called time. Time that we never seem to have enough of. And first of all, I want you to know that you are not alone. Everyone struggles with making time for the things that they really want to do. Right now as I'm recording this, it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon and I'd rather be going to the beach or sitting at a cafe with friends, but I'm here. It's it's always a negotiation, right? What do you spend your time on? I see it in the gym, for example. There are people like me that are there every day and and then there are people that come in waves only, you know, on for two or three weeks and then you don't see them again for maybe another four weeks. It's also always fun to watch the newcomers. They usually start with a trainer and then after four weeks or so you don't see, you see them working out alone for a while. But then most of them drop off and you never see them again, sadly. And I think just like that, it happens with other projects people take on. Do you have a language app on your phone that you started? When was the last time you checked in? So please don't think that the whole world gets their stuff done and you don't. It's not the case. We all struggle with time. We all struggle dividing our day into time slots and deciding what should we do. But I also want you to keep in mind this, for today, at least. Nobody knows how much time we have left to live. Even if you're a biohacker planning to live to 180, and you're doing everything under the sun that you think prolongs life, you just don't know. So be aware that every day that passes is one day less in your life, even if you're still young. Every day is a goodbye to the previous day. So if this new thing you're considering is important to you, I strongly encourage you to start. Even if you don't have all the pieces together yet, I bet there's something you can start with right away. And it doesn't have to be a perfect start. My website, for example, is not 100%. There are things I want to add and change, but I'm not letting it hold me back. It will come together. So trust that the pieces will fall into place. And be willing to put yourself out there, even 
without a clear vision and all the steps that will take you to your desired end result. So everything new you want to do, whether it's a big project or a small one, requires that you make time. Very few of us have time sitting aside where we do nothing. Maybe if you're still in school, it's possible. I remember those days. But for most of us, our schedules are filled and we need to figure out how we squeeze the new thing in and on a regular basis. So my main suggestion for you today is this. You need to start to manage your time. Making time is managing time. Just like making a baby is managing a family. When you want to make something possible, you need to manage it. And you need to control it in some shape or form. If you let yourself be carried by time, waking up whenever you happen to wake up, doing whatever you feel like doing that day, then this may be hard for you. Most people have already scheduled things in their calendar, especially Monday through Friday. For some, the weekends are like I just described. So I know that managing time is something we don't want to do. Our gut rebels against this. We want to enjoy our time as much as possible and especially our free time, right? We want to play things by ear, be flexible for when the friend calls or wants to come over. Or we just want to lounge around in pajamas and watch TV. I understand all that, but unfortunately, without managing at least some of our time, it will be very difficult to make time for the new thing that we want to do. So... Managing your time means a few things, and I want to go over those. First, you take a closer look at what your days look like and how you currently spend your time. Which time slots are taken, meaning you cannot change them. This would be your job, or school, or both, driving time, family time, volunteer time, and so on. And then look at which time slots are taken, but maybe they're a little bit flexible, meaning... You're busy with things, but they don't have to take place at that exact time. Exercise, for example. Depending on the opening hours of your gym or the time that you go out and run, these activities could potentially shift. Dog walking, doing homework, chores such as cleanup, cooking, all those are flexible duties, activities. And lastly, you have hopefully time that is completely free. It may not be immediately clear to you that this is free because you probably don't sit around waiting for time to pass, but it's not filled with deliberate activity that needs to get done. Maybe you're watching TV, texting, surfing the internet, or reading. Second, managing your time means reclaiming some of your time. And that means you become aware of the time you have truly free And you begin to consider shifting some of the activities that are flexible. This first has to start in your mind. I have an example handy, so let me share this with you. I recently started a new job and the commute on the way home from work is truly terrible. I live in the Bay Area, so it gives you some insight. I notice that by the time I get home, it's later than normal. And since I still go to the gym after work, I get home even later. The extra driving time is consuming more of my time and also more of my energy. So I have been asking around and discovered that there is a gym right across my office and I've been considering going there right after work. Maybe not every day, but some days when traffic is really bad. This is with the hope that traffic is better by the time I finish with the gym. You So you could consider something similar. Think about shifting things that Save some time in order to make room for your project. And here are some options for you. So if your days are solid booked, like mine are, Monday through Friday at least, then your only option may be to start your day earlier, or you could make it longer. See, I strongly recommend the first of these two, even if you're not a morning person. The problem with long nights is that it's the tail end of the day and your focus and energy are are at a low point. And that's the time most of us are least creative. I say most. So this may not be true for you. And if you can make it work, then go for it. But 
And if you struggle with focusing and concentrating in the evenings like I do, I try to put my most important work in the morning hours. And so especially if you're one of your goals is to establish a morning routine, then this will help you. So basically what I'm suggesting is to get up earlier. I love early mornings, even though they're so hard to realize. But once I do and get up early, I just love it. I actually wrote a blog post on that. So check out my website for that. But it's quiet outside and you feel free and in control of your day. And for me, creativity flows. My thoughts are clear. Especially if your project involves writing of some sort, you'll find mornings perfect for that. If you have free time in the middle of the day, then that's great for you. Maybe you have a whole day off or maybe you have every afternoon off or every other day. Whatever your schedule is, if you can carve out some time in the day, then do so. It should be time that is available regularly, not just once in a while. And don't worry so much about the length of the time. Even if you only have 30 minutes or an hour, take it. It's a start. If you're building a website, you can do a lot in 30 minutes. If you're baking or cooking or doing photography, you may need a little bit more. So it depends. Depends on the activity and on your schedule. See, I rely mostly on weekends to get my work for Quest for You done. The weekdays are just busy for me and my time is limited. But if this carving out time is new to you and you're just getting started, then start small. Like I always say, 30 minutes is all it may take to get at least going. And once you have momentum, you will find yourself wanting to do more and you'll find more time in your day. It's often just a hurdle of getting started that we need to overcome. So go through the step of reclaiming time. It's important. Find some available time in your day and use it. And then also think about combining activities to free up time. Can you take the bus or the train to work and school instead of driving? This may involve a little bit more time, but you can use the time while you sit on the bus to work a little bit on your project. Maybe you read something that helps you prepare for your project. And then also learn to take advantage of unexpected free time. For example, holidays. I love holidays. An extra day to work on Quest for You. Or even just an extra hour or two. A meeting was canceled or traffic was unexpectedly light. Begin to look for those extra pockets of time that open up. And instead of stopping at the mall or browsing your media feeds, get working on your project. And then consider giving up some activities that are flexible. If this is something that's really important to you, then some sacrifice may have to be part of it. For me, it's social time on the weekends that I have reduced. I also curb my browsing activity and social media time. So think about time that you can literally free up. That may not always be easy, but think about the long-term benefits. Maybe your project can turn into a business that will later sustain you and give you the freedom to spend more time with your friends. Short-term sacrifice for long-term freedom. And lastly, depending on the magnitude of your project or where you are with it, you may want to, you may want to think about giving up your job. We can do a whole nother episode on this in the future. But if you're working on a business that is meant to sustain you, eventually you may need to quit your regular job. Your project needs to become part of your day and it needs to become part of your mind as well. So establishing a routine will help you with both, which brings me to the third point. Managing your time also means to establish a routine which will ensure you are consistent. A routine will keep you going. A routine will take you back to the gym even after you missed a day or two. A routine is the most important element of managing your time. Maybe you found some time in your day. Maybe you even started to sit down for 30 minutes for a week. But now life kicks in. You get sick or a friend calls you needs you. Or you found a new TV show that you like. So now you stay up later and struggle getting up early in the morning. Maybe work gets really busy. Controlling your time means you have to schedule your time for the project, just like you schedule time for brushing teeth, for working out, for going out for dinner. It becomes another slot on your calendar. So when life kicks in, you will notice if the time you carved out for your project is sustainable. 
That is why I also love mornings. They are there for me every single day as long as I can get up early enough. Evenings are much tougher to manage. Many things that can interfere with an evening. So if you notice that you can only get to your project once in a while and that things interfere with your free time, then either you need to manage the interferences, but if you find you can't because they are outside of your control, then you may need to find another time slot. So a routine ideally looks like this. It's a fixed time slot in your day. You can use an alarm if you need to. And maybe you can create a little ceremony around it to get it started. Maybe light a candle, turn on some music, whatever motivates you. And it's book time that cannot be taken by anyone or anything else. It's the time that you say no when others want it. Just like work. Sorry, I can't. I'm at work. How often do we say that? Same thing. Sorry, I can't. I'm working on a project. And ensure that your environment supports it. Distraction-free, phone off, no email alerts on your computer, and so on. Whatever you need to do, do it. You need to take control of your time to ensure you can stick to it consistently. And making it a routine places it on your mind and on your calendar. I'm going to leave you with that today because our episode is already pretty long. And I'm hoping that this helps you with some of the things that you've been contemplating Some of the things you've been thinking about starting and just haven't gotten around to. Have a wonderful day and I'm sending you much love. Until next time.